Good morning. I'm Lee Jameson, and this is the 336th installment of the Bible in a Year. Today's readings include Ezekiel chapters 42 through 44 and 1 John chapter 1. The Temple's Chambers, chapter 42. We're speaking of the angel who is leading Ezekiel around. Then he led me out into the outer court toward the north, and he brought me to the chambers that were opposite the separate yard and opposite the building on the north. The length of the building whose doors faced north was a hundred cubits, and the breadth fifty cubits, facing the twenty cubits that belonged to the inner court and facing the pavement that belonged to the outer court, was gallery against gallery in three stories. And before the chamber was a passage inward, ten cubits wide and a hundred cubits long, and their doors were on the north. Now the upper chambers were narrower, for the galleries took more away from them than from the lower and middle chambers of the building. For they were in three stories, and they had no pillars like the pillars of the court. Thus the upper chambers were set back from the ground more than the lower and the middle ones. And there was a wall outside parallel to the chambers toward the outer court, opposite the chambers, fifty cubits long. For the chambers on the outer court were fifty cubits long, while those opposite the nave were a hundred cubits long. Below these chambers was an entrance on the east side as one enters them from the outer court. In the thickness of the wall of the court on the south, also opposite the yard and opposite the building, there were chambers with a passage in front of them. They were similar to the chambers on the north, of the same length and breadth, with the same exits and arrangements and doors, as were the entrances of the chambers on the south. There was an entrance at the beginning of the passage, the passage before the corresponding wall on the east as one enters them. Then he said to me, The north chambers and the south chambers opposite the yard are holy chambers, where the priests who approach the Lord shall eat the most holy offerings. There they shall put the most holy offerings, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, for the place is holy. When the priests enter the holy place, they shall not go out of it into the outer court without laying there the garments in which they minister. For these are holy. They shall put on other garments before they go near to that which is for the people. Now, when he had finished measuring the interior of the temple area, he led me out by the gate that faced east and measured the temple area all around. He measured the east side with the measuring reed, 500 cubits by the measuring reed all around. He measured the north side, 500 cubits by the measuring reed all around. He measured the south side, 500 cubits by the measuring reed. Then he turned to the west side and measured 500 cubits by the measuring reed. He measured it on the four sides. It had a wall around it, 500 cubits long and 500 cubits broad, to make a separation between the holy and the common. The glory of the Lord fills the temple. Chapter 43. Then he led me to the gate, the gate facing east, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel was coming from the east, and the sound of his coming was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. And the vision I saw was just like the vision I had seen when he came to destroy the city, just like the vision that I had seen by the Kibar Canal, and I fell on my face as the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. While the man was standing beside me, I heard one speaking to me out of the temple. And he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever, and the house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name, neither they nor their kings 
by their whoring and by their dead bodies of their kings at their high places, by setting their threshold by my threshold, and their doorposts beside my doorposts, with only a wall between me and them. They have defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed, so I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put away their whoring, and the dead bodies of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. As for you, son of man, describe to the house of Israel the temple, that they may be ashamed of their iniquity, and they shall measure the plan. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known to them the design of the temple, its arrangement, its exits, and its entrances, that is, the whole design, and make known to them as well all its statutes and its whole design and all its laws, and write down in their sight so that they may observe all its laws and all its statutes and carry them out. This is the law of the temple, the holy territory on top of the mountain, all around shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. The Altar these are the measurements of the altar by cubits, the cubit being a cubit and a handbreadth. Its base shall be one cubit high and one cubit broad, with a rim of one span around its edge, and this shall be the height of the altar. From the base on the ground to the lower ledge, two cubits, with a breadth of one cubit, and from the smaller ledge to the larger ledge, four cubits, with a breadth of one cubit, and the altar hearth, four cubits, and from the altar hearth projecting upward four horns. The altar hearth shall be square, twelve cubits long by twelve broad. The ledge also shall be square, fourteen cubits long by fourteen broad, with a rim around it half a cubit broad, and its base one cubit all around. The steps of the altar shall face east. And he said to me, Son of man, thus says the Lord God, these are the ordinances for the altar. On the day when it is erected for offering burnt offerings upon it and for throwing blood against it, you shall give to the Levitical priests of the family of Zadok, who draw near to me to minister to me, declares the Lord God, a bull from the herd for a sin offering. And you shall take some of its blood and put it on the four horns of the altar, and on the four corners of the ledge, and upon the rim all around. Thus you shall purify the altar and make atonement for it. You shall also take the bull of the sin offering, and it shall be burned in the appointed place belonging to the temple outside the sacred area. And on the second day you shall offer a male goat without blemish for a sin offering, and the altar shall be purified as it was purified with the bull. When you have finished purifying it, you shall offer a bull from the herd without blemish and a ram from the flock without blemish. You shall present them before the Lord and the priests shall sprinkle salt on them and offer them up as a burnt offering to the Lord. For seven days you shall provide a daily a male goat for a sin offering and also a bull from the herd and a ram from the flock without blemish shall be provided. Seven days shall they make atonement for the altar and cleanse it, and so consecrate it. And when they have completed these days, then from the eighth day onward the priests shall offer on the altar your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, declares the Lord God. The Gate for the Prince Chapter 44 then he brought me back to the outer gate of the sanctuary, which faces east, and it was shut. And the Lord said to me, This gate shall remain shut, it shall not be opened, and no one shall enter by it, for the Lord, the God of Israel, has entered by it. Therefore it shall remain shut. Only the prince may sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by way of the vestibule of the gate, and he shall go out by the same way. Then he brought me by way of the north gate to the front of the temple. And I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord, 
and I fell on my face, and the Lord said to me, Son of man, mark well, see with your eyes and hear with your ears all that I shall tell you concerning all the statutes of the temple of the Lord and all its laws, and mark well the entrance to the temple and all the exits from the sanctuary, and say to the rebellious house, to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, O house of Israel, enough of all your abominations in admitting foreigners, uncircumcised in heart and flesh, to be in my sanctuary, profaning my temple, when you offer to me my food, the fat and the blood. You have broken my covenant, in addition to all your abominations, and you have not kept charge of my holy things, but you have set others to keep my charge for you in my sanctuary. Thus says the Lord God, no foreigner, uncircumcised in heart and flesh, of all the foreigners who are among the people of Israel, shall enter my sanctuary. But the Levites, who went far from me, going astray from me after their idols, when Israel went astray, shall bear their punishment. They shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having oversight at the gates of the temple and ministering in the temple. They shall slaughter the burnt offerings and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before the people to minister to them, because they ministered to them before their idols and became a stumbling block of iniquity to the house of Israel. Therefore I have sworn concerning them, declares the Lord God, and they shall bear their punishment. They shall not come near to me to serve as priests, nor come near any of my holy things and the things that are most holy, but they shall bear their shame and the abominations that they have committed. Yet I will appoint them to keep charge of the temple, to do all its service and all that is to be done in it. Rules for Levitical Priests but the Levitical priests, the sons of Zadok, who kept the charge of my sanctuary, when the people of Israel went astray from me, shall come near to me, to minister to me. And they shall stand before me to offer me the fat and the blood, declares the Lord God. They shall enter my sanctuary, and they shall approach my table to minister to me, and they shall keep my charge. When they enter the gates of the inner court, they shall wear linen garments. They shall have nothing of wool on them while they minister at the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen turbans on their heads and linen undergarments about their waists. They shall not bind themselves with anything that causes sweat. And when they go out into the outer court to the people, they shall put off the garments in which they have been ministering and lay them in the holy chambers, and they shall put on other garments, lest they transmit holiness to the people with their garments. They shall not shave their heads or let their locks grow long. They shall surely trim the hair of their heads. No priest shall drink wine when he enters the inner court. They shall not marry a widow or a divorced woman, but only virgins of the offspring of the house of Israel or a widow who is the widow of a priest. They shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the common, and show them how to distinguish between the unclean and the clean. In a dispute they shall act as judges, and they shall judge it according to my judgments. They shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my appointed feasts, and they shall keep my Sabbaths holy. They shall not defile themselves by going near to a dead person. However, for father or mother, for son or daughter, for brother or unmarried sister, they may defile themselves. After he has become clean, they shall count seven days for him. And on the day that he goes into the holy place, into the inner court, to minister in the holy place, he shall offer his sin offering, declares the Lord God. This shall be their inheritance. I am their inheritance. You shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. They shall eat the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, and every devoted thing in Israel shall be theirs. 
and the first fruit of all the first fruits of all kinds, and every offering of all kinds from all your offerings shall belong to the priests. You shall also give to the priests the first of your dough, that a blessing may rest on your house. The priests shall not eat of anything, whether bird or beast, that has died of itself or is torn by wild animals. And that concludes the reading in Ezekiel. And now, the first letter of John, chapter 1. The Word of Life That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father, and which was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Walking in the Light This is the message we have heard from him, and proclaim to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And that concludes the reading in 1 John. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. To gain a wider audience for this series of videos, I ask a few favors of you. First, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, you can also click on a bell icon and that will make sure that you receive notifications when new videos come out. Then, if you have comments or questions, uh, even if they're critical, I want to hear from them. Be civil, of course. Uh, the YouTube algorithm rewards videos that receive audience participation. So, uh, I appreciate your input. You are a part of this channel as well. Thank you, and have a blessed day.